Hi everybody, thanks for watching. This is So Heidi and this tutorial is on creating symbols in Illustrator. Uh, I'm using Illustrator CS6. Symbols work in many versions backwards, uh, so all the CS versions and I'm sure even beyond that. A um, couple things might look different but uh, just follow along, I'm sure you'll be able to get it if you're in an earlier version. Now, if you've never worked with symbols, what they are is they allow you to create one master instance of an object so that if you want to have 10 of those objects on your artboard and they need to be all changed, you can just edit the symbol and the changes will cascade through. So in this example, a button. I've got a button that's going to go on a shirt and the shirt has 10 buttons and if I perhaps decide later I want to change the shape or some detail about the button, all I have to do is edit the master symbol instance and every um, instance of that symbol on my artboard will be updated. So let me go ahead and show you how you do that. First you create your object, so I've got a button here. There's a couple ways you can make a symbol. You first need your symbols palette open. If it's not open, just choose Window, Symbols. With that open, you can take your object and drag and drop it into the symbols palette. Okay. From there, a dialog box comes up. New symbol, so we can name that Round button and you'll notice there's the option for a type we've got a movie clip and a graphic now there's a note in here that's not in previous versions of Illustrator so it was a misconception a lot of people thought oh it's Illustrator I need it to be a graphic not a movie clip it actually doesn't matter these can be it can be set to either one um, and it's telling you this right here that is a setting specifically for importing into Flash um, within Illustrator a movie clip and a graphic are regarded as the same thing so you can just leave it as a movie clip one less step to have to change it to a graphic and hit OK so now you'll notice we've got the symbol thumbnail in our symbols palette and you'll notice that the actual graphic on the artboard looks a little different so I'm gonna undo do a command Z just to show you how it looks different so you'll notice when it's a symbol it just has the bounding box and a little crosshair in the middle when it's actually an object and not a symbol you can see all the individual anchor points and everything is outlined in that specific layer color that you're working on in this instance it's blue um, the other way you can turn it into a symbol is by having the object selected and then from the symbols palette choose to fly out new symbol. So we go through the same steps and we turn it into a symbol. You'll also notice if you have your appearance palette open that it's showing you when this is selected it's a symbol. See if I deselect it and reselect it you'll notice it's showing me I have a symbol selected. So those are the ways to know you have a symbol. From there now you've got your symbol created, we want to make multiple copies of this. So you can just copy and paste this symbol you've already got on your artboard. You can hold the Option or Alt key while you click and drag to quickly make multiple copies as opposed to doing Command or Control C and V. Um, from there, let's say you had actually deleted all instances of your symbol on your artboard and you wanted to bring it back. What you do then is you just drag and drop it from the symbols palette. Okay, that will create another instance. You can continue to do that if that's the way you prefer as well. Okay, so from there, let's make a few more. Um, we'll just get these evenly distributed as they would be on a shirt. Okay, and now I want to edit my symbol. So I can edit my symbol a couple different ways. The first way is to just double click on the symbol on the artboard. Okay, now I'm getting a warning in a dialog box. It's telling me if I edit this symbol, any edits will be applied to all instances of the symbol. And that's fine. That's what I want to do. So I hit OK. And now I'm going to zoom in on this. And using my direct selection tool, I'm just going to change the shape a little and we'll change it from pink to green. So from there, you'll notice that all the other buttons, all the other symbol instances got grayed out. So I can't edit those. I'm kind of in this what's called an isolation mode where I'm just editing this symbol. You'll also notice you get a gray bar with a green line across the top and it's showing me I'm editing my round button. So from here, I just escape to get out and all the other buttons are going to update accordingly. Pretty cool. Um, the other way to update the symbol is from the symbols palette you can double click on the symbol. You don't get the warning. Um, I think they just assume if you're double clicking within the symbols palette you know what you're doing. Uh, so from there 
We'll just change the shape a little bit more, make this into some kind of weird, funky little button, kind of retro, and we'll change the color again. And again, you just hit Escape, and now all the instances of the symbol have been updated. Um, on the artboard, you can change the size and the proportion of the symbol. You can rotate them. Okay, so those are things you can change individually on a symbol that are not linked to the master instance. The master instance of the symbol, things that you want to edit in there that you can only edit in there are color and moving around specific anchor points, adding a new little shape in there. Um, you know, we could, let's say, oh, I want there to be another hole right here. We could do that too, okay? See it out, added another hole. So that's where you want to do the editing that's anything beyond rotating or resizing your symbol. Um, you can export and share symbol libraries between documents. So you just choose the flyout, choose save symbol library, and then when you want to load it, choose open symbol library, other library, browse it out wherever you saved it on your desktop. Um, when you do that, you will get all the symbols that you've got in the library in that Illustrator document. Now, the symbols are not linked across documents. So if you pull this button into another document and then you change it there, the button in this document will not update. They're only linked within the same document. So I uh, hope that makes sense for you guys. Um, hope you enjoyed watching how to make symbols and understand how they work and uh, why you can use them to your benefit. Thanks for watching, everybody. I uh, hope you have fun with this. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.